Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So <laughs> every time I say I'm not gonna do a weekend video, something comes up, it's usually Elon Musk's fault. This time it's actually NASA's fault. Uh, hot off the press, it appears that SpaceX, with their Starship of all the crazy things, has won NASA's contract to land on the moon. So Dear Moon is no longer the coolest project that they're working on. And of course they were working on Mars, but that's a private thing. But so basically there were three main competitors. There was Blue Origin, schadenfreude. Uh, there was Dynetics who actually, I, I agree with the angry astronaut that I actually thought Dynetics had the best um, like plan. It was basically like an Apollo squat. And I'm sorry, I'm just doing this super quick off the cuff. You can look up pictures. I just don't have time to put them on. So I'm just going to like ship this off online anyway. But basically it, it looks like if you remember the Apollo lander with the bell and the little thing on top, and it's like wider than that, it's got two little tanks on the outside. <clears throat> and so that would land and it's got a very short ladder to get down. It seemed like a very, very reasonable solution, and it was very highly reusable. It had two drop tanks that would come off, but the whole rest of the vehicle was reusable. Uh, Blue Origins was incredibly unreusable, so it was the worst of the solutions. And then there was Starship, and it was the Starship Lunar Lander model. So it doesn't have the fins. It was only designed to go into orbit, <clears throat> and then it was it would you know circle the Earth, and it would then get transported to the moon. And I, I can't recall right now if the idea is for it to go from Earth orbit to lunar orbit and then land, or whether it's eventually just supposed to circle the moon and land and come back up again. I think at first it's supposed to go from Earth orbit. So just like the Apollo missions did, right? It would be circling the Earth, then it would do a, a burn on the opposite side from where the moon is, raise its orbit up to meet the orbit of the moon. It would then do a retro burn to like get into lunar orbit, and then it would come down and land. Uh, so it's, it doesn't have heat shields on it. It doesn't need to re-land and um, it actually lands propulsively straight down. So you can imagine like the Falcon 9 booster, except it doesn't use its bottom engines because the bottom engines are too powerful at, you know, one sixth gravity on the moon and plus the fact they'd kick up dust everywhere. So it has these little engine pods. Uh, again, if you've seen the, the Dragon crew capsule, it's escape pod, like little escape rockets are like around the sides. So it'd be more like something like that, closer to the top, instead of the fin up at the top that gives it a little bit of a phallic like, look. <laughs> anyway, it, instead of that, it's got these little pods that are little mini um, rocket engines. <clears throat> and so it will come down and it will actually like, you know, fire those engines, which will actually make it easier because the entire body of the craft, let's see if I can do this. One of the problems with, with launching a spacecraft is of course you're balancing, you know, something like that on top of your finger, right? Because that's where the thrust is coming from. As they're landing, the thrust is going to come from up here. So the actual the center of mass will be below it. So this makes landing very, very much easier. And the, the rocket engines have a very low thrust because of course they're only designed to work at one sixth gravity. So all of that means that you can reuse this ship, but also it propulsively lands and is able to then take back off again, and then it can use its main engines to slow itself down in Earth orbit if it wants. Never going to re-enter Earth orbit, so what it would do is it would just continue to orbit Earth, people would get on it, and then it would get refueled, well, it get refueled first, then people would get on it, and then it would fire on the opposite side to the moon, it would raise its orbit up, and it would go back again. So it would keep cycling back and forth, it's a cycler, <coughs> uh, more or less with landing involved. So all of this is super cool. I think it's going to still utilize the Lunar Gateway. I have to check on all of that. So again, the, the Lunar Starship may be uh, something that only is going between the Lunar Gateway, which is going to be in kind of cislunar orbit uh, permanently. So like a space station. So basically like the International Space Station, but instead of being um, orbiting the Earth, it's going to be orbiting the Moon. So basically that would be the goal. But anyway, if that's the case, then it never even has to come back to Earth again. It can just go between the Moon and orbit around the Moon and then back down to the Moon and then back. So it'll have to get refueled. The refueling process, <clears throat> one of the reasons why people thought that um, Blue Origin had the kind of shoe in number one, they have a lot of money and they have a lot of lobbying power. But the second reason why was because they're using Hydrolox, which is hydrogen and oxygen. And those two ingredients, you can actually mine and get off the moon. Whereas uh, the, the Starship is using methylox, which is methane and oxygen. So you can certainly get the oxygen off the moon, but you can't get methane off the moon. So that's a downside to the Starship <clears throat> because you're going to have to transport methane from Earth. But again, you know, all of this stuff in the near term, 
it doesn't matter because nobody is going to be mining the moon in the near future, right, in the next couple of years. So all of this stuff is far term. And of course, they can come up with a new system in the future if they need to. <clears throat> uh, so the major dis the major problem with the Starship, and by the by, if anybody wants to send me a Starship or something, everybody else seems to have a model of a Starship, but I can't seem to find one online. So tell me where to find one or like just send me one or something. But anyway, in the meantime, I will use this lovely highlighter as a demonstration model. But the problem with it is that when you land, the crew compartment is like the cap of this highlighter. So everybody is up here. So the question is, how is everybody going to get from all the way up here, all the way down to here on the surface of the moon. So um, we were, you know, making jokes and say, I, I said that we should just get like one of those little tiny kitty swimming pools. And you know how the circus divers would like jump down onto that. So anyway, but pro but what, what uh, SpaceX has say said they're going to do is actually have this, there'll, there'll be like a, a door or something or a gantry or something that will open up and then there, a crane will come out and there will actually be like a little crane that will go up and down. And so you imagine like a little cage if you remember Game of Thrones, when they go up the wall, the ice wall and everything, when they go up that wall, they're in a little cage and they crank it up. So it's kind of going to be like a real high tech version of that. So anyway, the goal is for the humans on top to be up here and then they let them down and then they raise them back up again. I don't know what sort of emergency protocols they have because <laughs> you would think they would want to have some sort of emergency protocol with all of this to make sure that... Uh, you know, if the, the, the crane broke or something, that there would be some alternate way of getting up. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll put a really, really big ladder up there. But uh, that was one of the problems with Blue Origin's concept was that it was a very, very tall craft, but it only had a ladder to get up and down. And um, if you've ever watched the moon landings or read anything about them, they had a very difficult time. Neil Armstrong was actually really, really worried when he got down with the original moon landing, Apollo 11, uh, the, 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 the leg pads didn't crush as much as they thought they would. So there was, I think, a three foot, like one meter gap between the bottom rung and the, the, the foot pad that was landing, that was sitting on the moon. And so he actually had to get down and then he had to jump back up again to see if he could get back up. And I think they had contingency plans, like Buzz Aldrin had like a rope or something. And so if if they had to, Buzz Aldrin could have lowered a rope down and kind of like hauled him back up again if that hadn't been, you know. They had these crazy contingency plans. And honestly, now that I'm remembering, the original plan or one of the original plans when they were trying to save weight was just to cut the ladder entirely and have like one of those rope ladders that has the knots in it every couple of feet and they were literally supposed to do that. And if you can imagine being in a big pressurized spacesuit, even at one sixth gravity, it would have been insane to do that. So anyway, verticality is a problem when you're on the moon because you don't have like a nice big, you know, crane that can come over and pick you up and take you down from there. So that is all uh, problematic, but SpaceX apparently solved it well enough that NASA thinks it was better than Dynetics solution, which again was the kind of squatty one so that the astronauts wouldn't have that far to go. It is a really elegant solution aside from that because number one, it can take a ton of people uh, or cargo, right? So you can, you can swap out the top part could either be habitable or it could just be a really huge volume to bring down stuff. So you can bring down things to the moon. And with that, then you can, you know, go back again and you can take, uh, so only, obviously one will be a cargo version and one will be a crew version because you don't want to waste the pressurized crew cabin one on cargo. Uh, but anyway, so they can have an unpressurized or lowly pressurized or not human rated version of the Starship. And then they can have a human rated version of the Starship. Anyway, the long and short of this is, and now I've talked for nine minutes, the long and short of this is that this is actually kind of unexpected. Uh, I think most people actually thought that Blue Origin was going to win the contract just because they have such big pockets and they have such big lobbyists. Um, but then other people said that Dynetics solution was the most elegant and simple version of what's going on. Uh, I think I'm super happy for SpaceX. I'm a little sad for Dynetics about that because they're a small company and they certainly could have used the contract. But this is huge. This basically is NASA saying Starship is working. We see that it's a viable platform and we think that it's the future. 
and and wow. <laughs> so anyway, uh, by the by, if you if you care about this, I think we are going to be leaving in the next couple of days to go to Texas to try to catch SN15, which is crazy. It's a 22 and a half hour drive. So we're going to be doing some quick blogs on the way, right? We'll just be shooting video as we go, charging up at the Tesla charging stations. We're probably on Twitter. We'll say what the next charging station we're going to is. So if you happen to be near that area, you can come join us and, you know, wave at us and say hi. We'll put our masks on and stuff. Even though we've been vaccinated, we're all good. But uh, anyway, so we're super excited about that. And now I'm even more excited because I can go there and I can actually look at this thing and I can imagine that on the moon and how insane that is going to be. So anyway, apologies, somebody's driving a motorcycle outside. <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this fun and informative. I'll try to do another one with more graphics and stuff later on, but I just wanted to get this news out to you all, my viewers, my favorite people on earth. So thank you all very much. Again, don't forget about uh, my Patreon. It's down in the description. Uh, don't forget about the merch store. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all of that good stuff. Don't get, forget to shop for Amazon and Tesla in the description. And in the meantime, please do feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is, oh, you won't be able to see it because there's no post. Anyway, at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Until next time, bye-bye.